So this is a Kubota L3010. Uh, this is the glide shift transmission in it. Um, Four-wheel drive. About 16, 1700 hours on it or so. Um, just want to show you how much work is involved if you have the notorious leak out of the bottom weep hole right here. You can see it's still got some hydraulic fluid on it. So this is what uh, drives the front wheel drive. Um, they refer to it as the propeller, I believe propeller shaft. Um, but basically it's a drive shaft that when you engage it, that's what drives the front wheel drive. And if you look, this is the collar, and then there's a sleeve and then two seals. And those ride back up in here. And if you look in there, you can see the ball bearing as well. I was pretty surprised of how easy these popped out. Um, and there's definitely some wear to them. So definitely the cause of the hydraulic leak. Um, and it was a pretty good leak. It was a constant puddle underneath the tractor to the point that uh, you know something had to be done. So apparently it sounds like a lot of people have issues with that on Kubotas. Uh, this, this seems like the Grand L series tractor that this was a common issue. I do believe when I ordered the new seals that uh, it is some kind of revised part number. So I don't know if something changed, if it was that common of an issue or what. Um, but it's definitely a known, known issue with people with uh, Kubotas and it, I've heard of people with a lot less hours than this tractor having this issue. Um, now this tractor being an L3010, I believe it's a 2000 or 2001. So it's got a few years on it and it's kind of something you'd expect on an older tractor. But I know there was a lot newer tractors back then that had the same issue. So, But just want to show you what's all involved if you have to split it. Um, and I'll be honest, I've split bigger tractors than this and this one was a little bit, little bit more of a chore just because of how compact things are. So just to kind of show you like all the tin, obviously all the tin work, the whole fender assembly has to come off, which is not a bad thing. I'm gonna clean everything up with the pressure washer. Um, the grill, normal stuff, um, the dash, floor pan. Um, this whole assembly right here is what's referred to as the panel frame assembly. So that whole thing has to come out and there is, being that this is a glide shift um, with the shuttle shifter right here. So this normally would go on a shaft right here for your forward and reverse. And that comes off of the transmission right here. Mounts on there like that, and then this is where the handle will go to turn it back and forth. It's supposed to come apart right here at these splines. We tried heat and everything, couldn't get it apart. So what we ended up doing is there's a roll pin that goes through there, and we were able to lift the panel frame up enough to drive the roll pin out, and then take this thing out with the panel frame. Just something that um, if you ever have that same issue, might have to look at. Um, it's supposed to come out, but just over the years, a little bit of rust on the splines um, just wouldn't budge. So, along with that, um, I also ended up taking the, um, the right side uh, loader frame off. I'll walk around the other side here. Just because it was easier to get to the hydraulic lines, because um, I left these with the tractor, um, those stayed, so it was a lot easier to get that out of the way and um, be able to not damage anything while the tractor is coming apart. The other thing is, um, if you read the service manual, it tells you to lift it from this fuel frame assembly. Um, but the only thing is, once you get it out, and if you want to try to jack it up, there's not much to put jacks under. So that's where it was kind of nice to leave half of the loader frame on, and then you've got a safe way to put jack stands under it while you're working on the rear half of the uh, tractor. And I just used a bottle jack to kind of keep it where it needs to be, and then a 
jack standing under there just for safety purposes as well. So, but back to a couple other things. If you when you do split these, um, being that this tractor has hydraulic steering, um, you need to pay attention to your hydraulic lines. Um, the feed, the main high pressure feed, it's pretty easy. It's the bigger one. Then there's just a rubber hose um, at your return, but you need to pay attention to these two. They're the same size. And what I did is I just left them in the boot. Um, now this is kind of filthy because I tried spraying it down with some degreaser and just with the hydraulic fluid leaking out as I took these lines off. But I left them in the little rubber boot here. That way I know which one is which. Um, I guess it wouldn't be a huge deal if you had them swapped. The biggest thing you're going to find out is once you get it all back together, um, steering one way is going to make the tractor go the opposite of probably what you want. So. Then along with that, um, so you've got all the hydraulic lines. Um, there's also this line, which I'm gonna end up replacing that rubber um, hose boot on there as well, since it's pretty rough. Um, and then I also have, did have a little bit of a leak coming out of the PTO. So while it's a, a part, we'll end up pulling that out. This comes off and then there's a rubber, um, just a normal, shaft seal behind there that can be replaced as well so um, other than that that's pretty much everything just a lot of stuff to get off before you're ready to split and when you go to do it that's the key is just make sure everything's apart and um, highly suggest buying the um, Kubota calls them the workshop manual or service manual really helps kind of follow a checklist as you're doing this that way you know what needs to come off and you don't miss anything so you try start to get the tractor split and you realize something's still attached and you definitely want to don't want to be under this stuff when you are in the process of splitting it so the other thing too probably um, check the uh, main input seal as well it doesn't look like it was leaking but we'll take a look at the bearing and everything underneath while it's apart um, also take a look at the clutch. Um, the clutch was in pretty good shape it seemed. Um, it was adjusted correct and I checked the adjustment when I bought the tractor. Um, and also the thing about this tractor being a glide shift is that you, if you read the manual and you run the tractor the correct way there's actually very few times where you need to use this dry clutch. So with the glide shift there's actually a hydraulic wet clutch in the transmission that um, does most of the work for you when you're using the shuttle shift. So through the manual of these tractors, if you throttle down basically to an idle, you can use the shuttle shift or the reverser and go forward, neutral, back um, as you wish. And even when you're running the PTO, because this tractor, if you do push in the foot clutch, you will kill the PTO. But to get around that, if you are doing like brush mowing or whatnot, which um, this tractor does do quite a bit in summer, um, easiest way to get around that is use a glide shift and downshift to first gear um, and then from there you can use a shuttle shift and um, there's no grinding no issues there so there's ways to get around it the biggest thing with glide shifts is it was kind of a proprietary thing to Kubota and I think a lot of people maybe just don't fully understand what their capabilities are they're actually a pretty complex transmission and can do a lot for you if you know how to run them uh, it's been a great tractor, it's just the leaks have just gotten to a point where something had to be done. So, But that's pretty much um, all for now. If I find any other issues, I will make another video.